Good afternoon. Um, thanks for being here for the session on uh, DataFX, the JavaFX Enterprise Framework. Now, I would like to start with two questions, and I would very much appreciate it if the audience responds honestly. The camera is on me, so it's not recorded what you answer. So the first question is, who is using JavaFX? Okay. The second question is, who is in this room because they want a good seat for the next talk, which is uh, Brian Guts? <laughs> I very much appreciate your honesty. <laughs> okay, so for the two uh, guys that didn't uh, raise their hands on the last question. <laughs> so what is uh, um, DataFX? More specifically, for the um, 598 persons who raised their hand, Java, first one bullet about JavaFX. JavaFX is part of the Java 8 SDK. So as of Java um, SE8, JavaFX, which is the user interface component, is the replacement of Swing, to cut it short. And JavaFX is, um, I think it's, it's, it's great for developing user interfaces, cross-platform using interfaces, using the standard Java APIs, using the Java APIs that you know. Because JavaFX is, is not a new language, it's not a scripting, it's Java. And it's in the uh, 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 SDK, so there's no reason not to use it, I think. Now, JavaFX itself um, has great APIs for the user interface, for animations, for um, uh, effects, it integrates with CSS and so. But um, in many real-world applications, you need more than just a user interface. You need interaction with a backend, or you need to have enterprise functionality in general. If you um, saw some of the early uh, JavaFX demos, they were impressive, video all with lots of uh, videos uh, displaying simultaneously. So it's, you can do cool things, but it's often ignored that um, you also need a business uh, part. If you want to create a JavaFX application for your company, well, they typically expect more than just fancy animations. So you need to have enterprise functionality. Um, and JavaFX, because it's purely Java, you can use the existing um, patterns that you use in Java. You can also use them in JavaFX, um, including the enterprise pattern. However, you should take into account First of all, the requirements of your application, and second, the, the, the resources of your target platform. Um, um, how many people here are aware that you can use JavaFX on Android and iOS? Okay, well, that's nice. Um, for those, and also for those that, that did not raise their hands, um, tomorrow, um, uh, the RoboVM guys and myself have a session specifically on JavaFX on mobile, so Android and iOS. So we will show how it works on uh, mobile devices. Um, and of course, those platforms, um, you can do great things with it, but it's, it's um, not recommended to run a whole application server on it or to, to run the whole Spring framework uh, on it, for example. So those are the things that you have to take into account you need to provide enterprise functionality. Sometimes you have plenty of resources and sometimes you don't. So when I said you can use all the Java APIs and the Java patterns, there are a few things that you have to take into account. One is um, if, uh, if you come from the uh, Swing world, you probably know that um, be careful not to manipulate uh, UI uh, controls when you're not on the um, what we now call the JavaFX application thread. So computational heavy tasks need to be executed on a background thread. And the result should be um, applied again on the JavaFX application thread. So if you're, doing, if you're using an enterprise library, you have to be aware of this. Um, start a new thread for doing something computation intensive and put, it then, put the result back on the uh, JavaFX application thread. So that's more or less a pitfall. The other thing is more or less um, uh, a goodie. Um, JavaFX introduced the concept of observable. And um, while this is part of the JavaFX packages, it actually is more a Java functionality. And I wouldn't personally, I wouldn't be surprised if this makes it into one of the next uh, Java uh, releases. It's still in a JavaFX package. But the concept of observable, it allows that you have producers of, of data, of uh, modeling information to populate an observable, which is yeah, which is an interface, but can be 
an observable object, an observable double, or an observable list. And if you populate this list, um, the consumers of that list will be notified when the list is changed. So that is, especially in UI environments, quite important. Um, it's the, um, I think it's the Hollywood principle, don't call us, we call you. Um, as if, if you have a user interface with a list view, and when a new data entry should be displayed in the list view, um, it would be a bad idea to, that the data that comes in has to call the list view and tell, hey, I'm here, can you display me as well? No, list view in JavaFX uses an observable list, and as a consequence, if a new entry appears in this observable list, which extends the Java Util collection list, um, it will appear in the user interface as well. So that's something that you can take advantage of. And then finally, um, JavaFX provides uh, an uh, XML-based uh, um, decla declarative way to express the user interface that you can leverage as well. Now, DataFX, um, which is an open source framework, um, I should have mentioned that before, an open source framework created by um, Jonathan Giles, who is uh, um, the, the lead of the JavaFX controls uh, team at Oracle, um, myself, uh, who is independent software developer at Logion, with company with three developers, and uh, Henrik Ebers, who is uh, uh, from Germany, uh, working at uh, Canoe. So it's an open source framework where we provide different enterprise functionalities that provide the functionality, but also leverage the Java FX characteristics. Um, often I got a question, so how is uh, uh, DataFX different from, for exa from example, Jersey? Now people that saw the, um, the, the keynote know that I'm a big fan of Jersey. Well, the difference is that DataFX takes advantage of the uh, observable and the threading characteristics of JavaFX. So there are different modules in DataFX, and each of them apply to um, different uh, um, constraints. So, for example, um, I will um, only discuss two of the components of those uh, modules. First of all, the data sources module, that's a part of DataFX. And here we provide REST uh, interface, SSE support, WebSocket support um, towards uh, external web services. Um, the second thing that I will describe is the flow API. And with this flow API, you can describe the flow and the actions that should occur when, um, when you're managing, when, when you're navigating through a business application with different screens, for example. So if the user presses the uh, next button, uh, what should change and, um, and how can I make sure that my model is kept intact and so on. Apart from that, we have um, what we call incubator projects. Um, those are the things that um, we use, um, but that are still subject to uh, API changes. For example, we have support for EGB, so that you can call remote uh, session beans from your JavaFX application. Take into account, don't do this on, uh, on a mobile phone if you have uh, limited resources. Inversion of control is, some, uh, is another uh, example. Um, validation is also some other um, projects that we have in the um, uh, incubator. Okay, so first of all, the um, data sources. Um, what we provide here is some, something like JAXRS. Um, it, it, it has a JAXRS style, and it allows you to call um, REST services. It also has SSE support, and um, SSE, um, for those um, uh, who might not know it, is, it means server sent events, and it's uh, um, um, well, sort of a new comet or long polling or something like that, but it's uh, um, more standardized, and um, I hope it will be in the next version of JaxRS, and I think it's pretty likely. For example, Jersey, which is the reference implementation of JaxRS, already contains support for server sent events. Um, DataVex uh, data source also supports WebSocket. We leverage the uh, um, GSR 356, which is the Java API for WebSockets, and it shows a demo. No, I have to show the demo. Right. Demo. Um, it's always it's always nice presenting other people's presentations. Originally, Henrik Ebers was going to do this presentation, but um, he couldn't make it, and he asked me to do the presentation. The only thing he forgot to send me his slides. I noticed this morning. So, um, do you know Project Avatar? Those of you who ever went to uh, Java 1 will probably know Avatar. It was announced um, and nobody knew what it was. 
So next, the, the, the year after, they said, now we know ourselves what it is. It's, uh, it's, it's like Angular um, or Node.js. So it's JavaScript on the front end on the ba and on the back end. And it was, it was a way f uh, for Oracle to say, hey, we can do JavaScript as well. And they, they wrote the back end running on Glassfish in JavaScript. Um, and it provides endpoints, so REST endpoints, um, that are sending, um, that are consuming get, post, uh, put, delete, but also WebSockets and SSE. And they also have a front end, also in JavaScript. And what we did is we replaced that front end with JavaFX. So what you see here is a JavaFX application. Um, it's clearly, uh, you can clearly see that I wrote this application. So does anyone know why this is an application of me? I, I, yeah, exactly. So uh, I'm pretty famous for my um, next generation user interfaces. So people don't realize it yet, but one day I, it might become famous. So seriously, I can't uh, uh, even uh, um, distinguish different colors and so. So what we have here is, for example, um, the stock tickers application. Um, you see that um, um, this is uh, getting data and the data is changing. So what we do here is we call a REST service and we get data using the SSA protocol and it's changing every now and then. And on every change, uh, automatically DataFX will make sure that your user interface control is fed with the new uh, values. We have a web store as well, which is um, where you can have um, a key A value B. And we put it in there. And then you see um, that you can uh, yeah, just post uh, values to any backend. Um, oops. And then we have the chat where I can start talking to myself. Actually, I prepared this uh, presentation so you see that I already was logged in. So, so this is what you can do with uh, uh, the data sources of DataFX. Very briefly show a, one piece of code. So in the web store app, um, we pushed an item because I had a key A and a value B. So what we did was we made a post request to a backend. And this piece of code, um, might be a little small for people in the back end, but um, I'm pretty sure if you ask Brian Guts, he will, he will go over it again. Um, so the, uh, what, what we do here is we create a REST source builder. We supply form parameters, a key and a value. We supply a host, a path, uh, and, and a request method. So this is very similar to, to JAXRS. And then we create an object data provider. We supply the REST source, and very important, we create a worker by calling the retrieve method on the object data provider. This means that in the, the background thread will be started and the REST request is gonna be executed in a separate thread. Now, if something changes, and um, for example, in the uh, similar get method, something will change, we want the result to be um, put uh, somewhere. And um, that's, um, yeah, that, that's, um, the result is gonna be uh, on an observable, and, you, and, and that observable will be populated not uh, in the um, background thread, but in the uh, foreground uh, thread. Um, I have only three minutes left, so I should now display the, um, the second part of DataFX, which is the DataFX uh, flow. This allows you to create a flow um, inside your, uh, your JavaFX application. So um, you can go from screen A to B to C and back. And typically, um, if you do this, this requires lots of boilerplate code and you have to take into account, oh, I'm now in screen B and if they go back, I should go to A, but then the data might have changed. So therefore we created the uh, DataFX flow uh, framework, um, which I can run as well. Oh, I had, um, okay. It's already um, running here. I'm gonna remove this because tech traces is never nice in a recording. <coughs> so this is uh, an example of the flow framework. I will show the code immediately. We have a first screen, it mentions welcome. Then we have a next screen, which shows us the first step. 
and, uh, another next screen, we can go back, next, next, and finally, when we're done, you see, we don't have a next button anymore, but we, and no finish button, but we can still go back. So, um, the code for this is pretty small. Um, we have a, a flow class in DataFX that allows you to, to create a flow. And you can define different actions and links on this flow. So for example, um, oh yeah, one thing I have to tell, we use sort of inversion of control here. So typically in JavaFX, you create your user interface with um, um, uh, FXML, and there you specify the controller class. But in many cases, you want it the other way around. You want to have your code, and then tell this code, get the FXML from uh, this file. So that's what we have in the controllers. And um, the methods on the flow allow you to specify a link on the flow. So if I'm in the first controller and the user presses the button next, which is an action handle, then go to the second controller. If he presses um, next again from the second controller, you go to the third controller. And there's a global back action, which means back, and that, that's a global action that's defined globally, which will go to the flow that you had, to the view that you had before. So um, it's, uh, um, there are some tutorials about this, and uh, if you want to know, know more about this, you can go to datafx.io. Um, it's uh, the last bullet on the uh, uh, slide. This will soon be replaced with this uh, link. So, um, as the slide mentions below, are the um, email addresses. In case you need more information, um, um, well, I'm walking around here for the rest of the conference. So, um, talk to me if you have questions or improvements. Um, talk to me. And now I think the room is going to be empty. Ah, don't think so. Thanks.